I bought my Framework laptop almost a year ago and I've been using it ever since. And today I wanted to talk about my thoughts on it, whether or not I would recommend it, and frankly, whether or not I regret buying it. So let's get into it. Now, I'd be a little bit surprised if you're watching this video and aren't familiar with Framework, but if you aren't, they're a company that started up, I believe, in 2020 with the goal of launching a laptop that was easily repairable and upgradable, but didn't compromise on things like size, aesthetics, and performance. A big part of their pitch was being advocates for right to repair, and since on this channel I like to repair hardware and talk about the importance of repurposing old computers and such, I felt like it was important to put my money where my mouth was, and so around nine months ago or so, I bought one. Now, I mostly work from home, doing editing and things like that on my desktop computer, but sometimes I need to work on the go, or more honestly, I just like to get out of the house, and so it's nice to have a laptop to work on emails and scripts and things of that nature. Around a year ago, I quit my old job and was in need of a laptop, so I decided to go with the framework as it seemed like a really cool brand and a really cool product that, well, I could use and repair if I needed to, but also later down the road when I wanted to upgrade, I could maybe turn the motherboard into this into like a cool home server or something. So I picked this up back in November of 2023. I specifically decided to get the 13th gen Intel model with the i5 because I don't need a crazy amount of performance or anything. I got the DIY kit, which doesn't include RAM or an SSD, and that cost me right around $1,000 or so, and then roughly another $100 to add 32 gigs of RAM and an SSD. So nine months and $1,100 later, do I regret this purchase? Well, I definitely wouldn't say I regret it, but using the framework laptop definitely isn't all just sunshine and rainbows. There definitely were some problems I encountered. The first issue was realistically just the price. $1,100 is a lot of money. And like I said, when I'm working on my laptop, it's really just to do emails and write scripts. So I really didn't need a lot in terms of performance. I could have very easily gone with a different brand of thin and light laptop and saved quite a bit of money. Or I could have even gone for a used laptop and saved even more. So going with the framework was definitely a more expensive option, at least in the short term. In the long term, however, it might start to make more sense, but we'll get to that here in a bit. Now, before I dive into the other things that I don't necessarily like about this laptop, I do want to preface with the fact that I don't really use a lot of laptops, so I don't have great comparisons to make. The last laptop I used was for my work, which was an Apple M2 MacBook Pro, which frankly was awesome. Granted, it would have cost, I think, over twice what I paid for this but that really is the only other laptop that I've had long-term hands-on experience with, so take some of my complaints with a grain of salt. The first big issue I have run into is just the battery life, and I know some of this may have to do with Windows and not handling sleep states very well, but even so, it hasn't been amazing. If I try to do things that are even lightly demanding, I notice that the battery does drain fairly quickly. Once again, I'm comparing this to an M2 MacBook Pro, which I could put that thing in my bag and use it and it would last for multiple days because the battery life was just insane. So it was a little bit of a downgrade, it felt like, going to something like this, where I had to make sure it stayed on the charger pretty often. That being said, I don't really work in many places where I don't have access to a charger, so it hasn't been a big deal for most of the time. Just every now and then where I don't necessarily have access to a charger, it can get a little bit dicey. Another issue I've encountered is the CPU getting pretty hot and the fans being pretty loud. Sometimes just doing very basic things like unzipping files or even just transferring files would cause the CPU to hit package temperatures of 100 degrees Celsius, which I'm aware that with modern CPUs that can be the expected behavior, but it would get really hot without doing a whole lot and, and the fans would ramp up and it was a bit annoying. I'm not sure how much of that has to do with just Intel or Framework or Windows, but it was definitely something that was noticeable and sometimes a bit annoying, especially if I was working in public. Now, multiple times this would happen and I would think maybe I should like swap the thermal paste, but it really didn't affect my day to day that much. So I kept pushing it off until filming this video. So here, just a little bit later in the video, I did decide to swap the thermal paste and well, you'll have to stick around for the results. The battery life and CPU temps were definitely the two worst things, but there were some smaller things that did get a bit frustrating as well. The screen actually does look pretty good, but for me, even on a small 13-inch laptop like this, I don't like to do any UI scaling because I like to try to get as much screen real estate as I can. So with no UI scaling, text would sometimes get a bit fuzzy, which when all I really do on this is write my scripts and respond to emails, having text that is a little bit less fuzzy would be nice. Once again, not a deal breaker, but definitely one of those things I noticed when switching from my old MacBook Pro. 
Also, the touchpad doesn't feel bad, but once again, compared to my experience with the MacBook Pro, it was definitely a massive downgrade. It's not that big of an issue because I typically just travel with a trackball mouse, but when I have to use the trackpad, it's not the most amazing experience by any means. I do appreciate the placement of the webcam being at the top of the bezel rather than down at the bottom like some laptops are where it points at your chin and just looks dumb. So I appreciate the placement and also appreciate that there's hardware privacy switches to deactivate the microphone and camera, but the webcam quality definitely isn't amazing. And I often struggled to get the exposure to be somewhat correct and white balance was sort of all over the place. Now this does have these custom IO modules, which I will get to here in a bit where you can add extra storage, but I do wish on the motherboard itself, there was more than just one M.2 socket for internal storage. Even if it was one of those tiny M.2 2230 or whatever they are, like what's in the Steam Deck, it would be nice to have a little bit more internal storage. That being said, I really don't know what all they could do with the CPU in terms of PCIe lanes. I don't quite understand how the Thunderbolt controllers work and such in terms of PCIe, so I don't know if it's even possible, but if it is, I wish it did have a little bit more room for PCI expandability, primarily for if you wanted to repurpose this system down the road as a mini PC or a little home server or something. But you at least get four lanes of PCIe on the NVMe socket, and you also get another lane of PCIe Gen 3 on the M.2e key slot for the Wi-Fi card. If this were a normal laptop that I spent $1,100 on and it had all of these issues I just talked about, I would definitely regret this purchase. But the good news is, this is not an ordinary laptop. The Framework Laptop 13 has so many good things going for it, primarily just because it was designed to be easily repairable and upgradable. In fact, a lot of the negative things I just mentioned could be solved with either a repair or an upgrade. I mentioned earlier that when I first started working on this video, I was like, oh, maybe I should try replacing the thermal paste. So I decided to pop it open by removing five screws on the bottom, taking off the keyboard cover, and then removing five more screws to take off the heatsink and fan. I swapped the thermal paste with some thermal grizzly, put everything back together, and to my surprise, temperatures got way better. Earlier I mentioned that package temperatures would jump all the way up to 100C, but after swapping the thermal paste, I was seeing package temperatures maybe up to like 80, 85 at most. So yeah, that's sort of not good that Framework sent me a laptop that was overheating because of maybe not having enough thermal paste, or I, I doubt it was using bad thermal paste, so most likely it was just not using enough thermal paste, so, so that's bad. But the fact that in less than like five minutes I was able to swap the thermal paste without voiding any warranty or anything like that is kind of amazing. Seriously, working on the internals of this laptop is unlike any other laptop or mini PC I've ever worked on. Everything is labeled, there's QR codes that point you to docs to help replace parts, and all of the parts can be found on their website. Also, every screw uses the exact same, I think it's the Torx T6 bit. You can replace like every component in this laptop with the screwdriver they send you. That's awesome. But you can also do more than just repair stuff. You can upgrade parts. For example, I was having issues with battery life and if I wanted to, I could upgrade the 55 watt hour battery to their 61 watt hour battery, which realistically, I don't know how much of an improvement that would really make, but it would be an improvement and would be really easy and fairly inexpensive to do. Recently, Framework announced the newest update of Framework 13 laptops, which will feature the Intel Core Ultra series CPUs or whatever they're called. That's not our naming choice. That was Intel's naming choice. So you can take it up with them. But those laptops also come with some upgrades, like for example, a better display, which has a 120 Hertz refresh rate and also a higher resolution. There's also an improved webcam, which should look much better for doing video calls and such, which I happen to do quite a bit. And the good news is I don't have to buy that laptop to get those upgrades. I can just literally go buy the display once it's available and buy the webcam and just drop them into my laptop and have the upgrades I need without having to pay for all the other stuff that I don't need because, well, what I have works totally fine for me. Now, if for some reason I started doing more video editing or something like that on the go and needed more performance, I could upgrade to one of the newer motherboards or to one of the Ryzen motherboards without having to buy a completely new laptop. And what's even better is that the motherboard in this thing wouldn't go to waste. I could just repurpose that motherboard as a mini PC or a server or something, which I'll talk about more here in just a bit. One of the other cool features with the Framework laptop is the customizable IO, which I'll be honest, is a bit limited in some ways. When they first announced this, it seemed like it was going to be really cool because they were also going to open up the schematics so people could make third-party modules, but there really aren't that many options on the market because, 
Well, I think it kind of turns out most people really don't need much more than USB and then maybe a few display outputs and an ethernet connection. That being said, sometimes when I was looking at cheaper laptops, they might not include USB-A ports, which I use. And with this, I can pick what ports I wanna have. And if I don't need more ports, I can actually just swap one of these with an SSD to have more storage or possibly even dual boot Linux or something like that. I mentioned a second ago, there aren't that many third party options on the market, but there are a few. And I actually came across this one here, which is a UART module, which for most people wouldn't be helpful at all. But I guess for someone whose job deals with a lot of UART connections, or you have a laptop that you're using for a lot of testing or repair where you use a lot of serial connections over UART, uh, that would be kind of nice to have just built into your laptop. So eh, it's kind of cool. I think one of the nicest things though is that for an $1,100 laptop, I'm really not that concerned about if it gets damaged. For example, I was doing something with our two-year-old the other day and he was just slamming on the keyboard and I was kind of nervous, but then it kind of hit me. I was like, well, worst case scenario, if he does break the shift key on my keyboard or something, I can just replace the keyboard and it would be pretty easy. Also, you may have noticed all of my stickers on the front. And well, that's because my wife kind of got into the hobby recently of collecting stickers and I kind of got into it with her. And so we, we buy each other stickers and it's kind of been a fun thing. And so I started sticking some of them on the front of my laptop. I don't think I would do that with another $1,100 purchase, but with this, if I decide I really don't like the stickers and for some reason I can't remove them without damaging the cover, well, I can just buy another cover and it's not something I wanna pay for. I can do it and it wouldn't be that expensive. And you just can't do that with another laptop without having to go through eBay and probably a big pain in the butt process of replacing it. So it's cool that I can use this laptop and not be worried about potentially damaging a component because, well, repairing the component is going to be pretty inexpensive and pretty easy. But outside of all of the like framework features, it actually is a good laptop and I've enjoyed using it. In fact, the keyboard I really like, it kind of reminds me of you can't really see it because the cable. This old Apple keyboard that I still use with my desktop PC, just because I, for whatever reason, like the keys. It, it reminds me of that and it just feels really good to type on. Even though I don't like the trackpad that much, I actually really enjoy typing on this thing. I've also been dual booting Linux just to get a bit more experience with using Linux desktop. And that's worked pretty flawlessly as well, even though I'm not using one of the officially supported distros. I did run into a couple of little issues, like for example, the screen brightness buttons don't work in Linux Mint, or at least I wasn't able to get them working. So I just have to adjust that on a little icon down in the taskbar. And I also never got the fingerprint scanner working, which I might have been able to dig into that a little bit, but I didn't want to. And with Windows, it is nice that Windows Hello just works out of the box with the fingerprint sensor. But yeah, it's been a really nice experience using this. It's very light, very thin, compact, and considering you can literally pull pieces off of it, it doesn't feel like rattly or anything. It feels really solid. Honestly, I've kind of been hoping that it would break in some way so that I could kind of show how easy it is to repair things, but it's been rock solid. I was also kind of hoping that the performance would eventually be limiting so I'd have an excuse to upgrade it. That way I could take the old motherboard and do like a cool home server video using that because, well, you can just take the motherboard and either put it in a case that Framework released with Cooler Master, which only costs $40, or you could even 3D print a case for it like I did because, well, Framework just made these models available. So cool. And I think that sort of brings me to my last point, which is that even if this had more problems and more bugs and stuff, I would probably still buy another one in the future just because I want to support Framework and their mission. I feel like it's pretty rare to find companies that make a good product that are actually advocates of sustainability and things like right to repair. And they don't just say it, they actually mean it. In fact, I love if you go to their website on the sustainability page, I think it says we are not sustainable because well, I feel like they're trying to be pretty honest and not just use, you know, feel good language that, that sounds good, but then they just do whatever they want because they're a company and they're just gonna try to make money. But they actually seem to mean what they're saying. And I think the proof of that is what they've actually made. They've made a product that's extremely repairable and upgradable, and they seem to be a business that is very pro-consumer. And it's hard for me not to want to recommend and support that. I mean, they literally have all their parts available on their website. They put QR codes on it to make it easily repairable. They have pretty much all of their schematics available. They made a $40 case to repurpose the motherboard. They made 3D models to print your own case for the motherboard. Like who does that? 
Framework does, baby. <laughs> And yeah, at the end of the day, they are a company, and I know at least one of their main goals is going to be to make money, because that's what companies do. But still, I think it's rare to find a company that is this pro-consumer and pro-sustainability, and I think it's important to support that. And they make it a lot easier to do that when they actually make a product that is genuinely good and fun to use and, and helpful. So yeah, it's not perfect, it has some issues, but all in all, I am extremely happy with this purchase, and... Well, although because I can just keep repairing it, I don't foresee myself buying another one in the future. If for some reason I end up buying a laptop for my wife or for my kid at some point or another one for work, it will most definitely be a framework laptop. I know this was a bit of a different video, but I've been meaning to do it for a while now and I've actually had a lot of people ask when this has been in the background and such to when am I gonna talk about it. So I figured I would talk about it, give my thoughts. Maybe some of you are considering getting one, but you're still not quite sure. Hopefully this is a, uh, Hopefully this is helpful. And if you're wanting me to take the motherboard out of this and put it in here and turn it into a cool little home server, let me know. Hit the like button, comment down below. Sounds like a lot of fun, so I might do it in a future video if you guys want me to. I think that's about it for this one. So as always, thank you guys so much, especially my amazing raid members that help me not have to sponsor every video and still keep the lights on. But also for the non-raid members, thank you guys. I appreciate you just watching and supporting the channel that way. Stay curious, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.